In this session, let's understand the concept of average maturity in term loans. Let's get started. Average maturity is a very critical concept in term loans because it's a metric that is going to help both the lenders and borrowers to understand the timing of repayments. So what it means exactly? It refers to the actual time it takes for the repayment of the term loan to be completed. So it is basically a weighted average that gives insight into how long the loan will be outstanding before it is fully repaid. Let's understand this better with an example. Look at this. There is a term loan of 10 lakhs with a five year repayment schedule and the repayment structure is equal annual installment of rupees 2 lakh each. That is every year 2 lakhs. So if you look at the repayment structure, it is going to be like this year 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and each year repayment is 2 lakhs. So the total is 10 lakhs. Now for finding out this average maturity, we are going to perform a small computation. That is, we are going to multiply the year with repayment. So what we are going to find out is weighted repayment. Year 1 into repayment of 2 is 2 lakhs. Year 2 into repayment of 2 lakhs is 4 lakhs. Year 3 into 2 is 6 lakhs. 4 into 2 is 8 and 5 into 2 is 10. So we have total weighted repayment of 30 lakhs. This can be compared with the total repayment or the total loan amount of 10 lakhs and that will help us to find out the average maturity. So average maturity is nothing but weighted repayment divided by loan amount and it's going to be 30 by 10 and what we are going to get is 3 years. So what does this mean? Let us interpret. See we know the term loan tenor is 5 years and we also have the information equal annual installment is 2 lakh every year. Here even though the loan term is five years, the three year average maturity tells us that on an average, the loan repayments are expected to be complete in three years. See, this does not change the fact that loan is for five years. What it communicates is it gives us an insight into when the bulk of repayments are happening. So this average maturity will convey the average time at which the principal is expected to be repaid. It's basically the point in time when the loan balance is expected to be at its midpoint. Say for example, here we are saying the average maturity is three years. So at three years point of time, this loan would have crossed its 50%. Even though we say midpoint, by this time, it would have crossed its 50%. So to put it simply, it is the point at which on an average, half of the total repayments have been made. Look, we are using the word average. So it does not mean exactly 50%, it is on an average. So why understanding this average maturity is very important. Number one, it helps in understanding the timing of cash outflows, let's say from borrower's point of view and cash inflows from the lender's point of view and it will also help to understand the interest outflow or inflow again from whose perspective we are looking at it. Let's say for example the loan is running for five years and if the average maturity is three years what does it mean? Most of the loan payment that is at least 50% of the loan repayment is going to happen within this first three years time period. That's the message. So this information is useful for lenders to have an idea about how the cash is going to come back to them and for the borrowers how they are going to pay this loan. Number three, it will also affect how interest is calculated. From lenders point of view, if they look at average maturity and if it is uh, very short when compared with the total tenor of the loan, then the risk is less in the loan. So they can even reduce the rate of interest. They can reduce the uh, risk premium or tenor premium, which they generally load on the longer tenure loans. And from the borrower perspective, if the average maturity is shorter, it means substantial loan is going to be repaid in this short period itself. So they have to manage their cash flows accordingly. Let's take some scenario analysis to understand this better. Look at here, the same example, five years, 10 lakh have to be repaid. And if you look at the repayment structure, repayments are higher in the first three years and then it is coming down. And if I calculate the weighted repayment, I get the total as 26 
and if I divide it by the total loan amount, I get the average maturity as 2.6. So what does this mean? When the average maturity is 2.6 years for the tenor of 5 years, it means there is a front loaded repayment. Borrower is paying a large chunk of the principal early in the term loan. Look at here, the borrower is almost paying how much? 7.5 lakhs in the first three years and the average maturity is 2.6. So in this 2.6 years, the borrower is actually paying 6.5 lakhs out of 10 lakhs. It means 65% of the loan repayment is happening within 2.6 years out of five years of the loan. So what will be the impact of this? The impact is reduced outstanding balance sooner. Yes, because in three years itself, substantial loan is repaid. So the outstanding is going to come down faster and faster. So this means shorter average exposure for the lender. Even though the lender is giving the loan for a period of five years, the average maturity is 2.6 where substantial amount is recovered already. Let's take another scenario. Here, if you look at the repayment in year one, there is no repayment at all, zero. Year two, three, four, five. In two and three, it is again one lakh, one lakh, and four and five it is three and five. And if I calculate weighted repayment, it comes to like 42 divided by 10, I get the average maturity of 4.2 years. It means in this 4.2 years, if you look at what is the total repayment happening? In 4.2 years, if I calculate, if I calculate the total repayment that is happening is only 6 lakhs. It means it's in the last leg, the remaining 40% is happening. That is 6 out of 10, 60% is happening in the average maturity period. And the remaining 40% is happening in very short period. Okay. So this average maturity of 4.2 years out of 5 years convey backloaded repayments. Yes, you can see the borrower is paying very smaller amounts here, no repayment. And here it is very smaller amount of the principal in the earlier years. And only in the later year, there is a larger repayments happening. So what will be the impact of this in terms of outstanding? There will be slower decline in outstanding balance because in the initial period, principal repayments are happening at a much, much slower phase. And in terms of risk, it is longer risk exposure for the lender because till a certain longer period, no big repayments are happening. So the risk level is high. Having understood all this, let us also understand the benefits that are available for both lenders and borrowers because of understanding and utilizing the average maturity information. First, let us look at from lenders point of view. Number one is risk management. It actually helps the bankers to assess the timing when principal is repaid. And this is very, very important for managing their credit risk. So if the average maturity is shorter, it means loan principal is repaid faster. So that actually reduces the bank's exposure to risk. Number two is interest income forecasting. See, by understanding the average maturity, bankers will be able to better forecast the interest income, what they are going to earn from the loan's life. So if average maturity is longer, then in terms of risk, it is high. But in terms of income also, it is high because bank is going to in earn interest on higher outstanding balance. Why? Because substantial repayments are happening at the fag end. So till such period, the principal is going to continue as such and bank will earn interest out of it. Number three, it will help them in liquidity planning because banks have to manage their assets and liabilities. And when there is a shorter average maturity, it means they are going to get substantial money now, which they can use for creating some other assets. And if it is going to be longer period, then till such time, they have to manage the show for that some other funds have to come into the banking system. So it will allow to plan their liquidity needs and it will also help them to ensure they have enough funds available when large repayments are due. Number four, loan portfolio management. So this actually helps the bank in balancing the bank's loan portfolio. Here they are going to have the picture of the cash flow pattern. In shorter cases, cash flow is going to come earlier. In longer cases, it's going to come later. Accordingly, they can plan their cash flows as well. Let us also see how it helps the borrowers. For borrowers, number one benefit is cash flow planning. They can plan their cash flows by knowing when the bulk of the repayments are going to happen. If 
the repayment is going to happen substantially in the earlier period which is conveyed through a shorter average maturity then they have to plan for higher cash to meet this outflows and if the average maturity is going to be longer period then they can be comfortable because much of the payments are going to happen only at the later stages number 2 it helps them to manage interest cost in case of a shorter average maturity less interest is paid over the loan's life because there is a faster reduction in principal balance number 3 it helps them to make financial planning if the borrower is expecting a major cash inflows are going to happen only at a later stage then they can prefer a longer average maturity and if substantial cash inflows are going to happen in the earlier period then they can go for a shorter average maturity number 4 is debt management it actually helps the borrowers to manage their overall debt by understanding how quickly they are reducing their outstanding obligations so let us conclude the concept of average maturity is not just a technical metric it has practical implications for both bankers and borrowers it helps the bankers manage risk liquidity and interest income it also helps the borrowers in planning cash flows managing interest cost and aligning debt repayment with financial goals so by understanding average maturity both parties can make informed financial decisions It is this credit and financial analysis mastery course exclusively designed for bankers and for those who want to have bankers point of view. This is a course which we have developed after a detailed analysis, a thorough discussion with several hundreds of bankers and finance professionals. We have identified what is their exact requirement when it comes to SME and corporate credit and financial analysis in this mastery bundle i'm going to give you access to various courses to start with we have course number 1 basics of credit analysis in this course we have explained the basics of credit analysis through various sections section 1 to 9 next comes course number 2 that is how to read balance sheet in this course we have explained what is balance sheet how to read them how to approach them by using real life financial statements then comes course number 3 how to do financial ratio analysis like a banker in this course we have explained all critical ratios that are analyzed by the bankers and we have also explained through case studies then we have course number 4 how to do cash flow analysis so through this course you will understand what is cash flow analysis how to do a typical cash flow analysis we have used case studies and reference to indas is also included in this course then we have course number 5 that is how to do fund flow analysis this is a critical financial analysis tool and in this course you will learn what is fund flow statement how to analyze them from banker's angle how to prepare fund flow statement from academic angle as well so overall five courses each 1499 so aggregate price should be 7495 but you are not going to pay that for you it's just rupees 2499 for one year access or rupees 4999 for lifetime access and it is not yet over you have some more bonus bonus is course number 6 how to carry out credit risk rating for non trading entities these are all the topics covered in this course then course number 7 it is how to carry out credit risk rating for trading entities not yet over you also have access to course number 8 that is how to prepare cma report for bank loans it's a comprehensive course which will run for 8 plus 5 hours and you will learn entire cma report preparation process and course number 9 how to prepare cash budget for bank loans course number 10 how to assess fund based working capital so in this course you will understand what is working capital what are working capital credit facilities and how to assess them what are the key ratios that are related to working capital and what are the additional key analysis that will be done by bankers on working capital matters you will get a comprehensive understanding of cash credit export finance and there are certain on demand videos as well so 5 plus 5 10 courses of value close to 15000 rupees but you are going to get it for one year access rupees 2499 lifetime access rupees 4999 not yet over you are going to get access to the 11th course how to assess non fund based credit facility so in this course you will learn about letter of credit bank guarantee its assessment as well then comes course number 12 how to do 
term loan appraisal and assessment because it's a complex process with a lot many technicalities so this course covers all in detail and course number 13 basic elements of loan proposal so how a typical loan proposal will be what are the basic elements that are covered in this course and we have course number 14 case study on credit analysis various case studies based on practical experience and discussion with various bankers and finance professionals are included in this course and course number 15 this is about about collateral securities where you get knowledge about collateral securities so overall it's 15 courses of value close to 22,485 it's 1000 plus lectures you can subscribe for one year access or lifetime access as you wish these are all pre-recorded courses so you can access them anytime as per your convenience you can access them in mobile app or desktop and for you the price is not 22,485 it is rather 2499 for one year access or 4999 for lifetime access you can check the link in description where without using any discount coupon code you can enroll at this discounted price because it's a discount applied link and not yet over you are also eligible for some more bonus the bonus is access to various ebooks and e resources you are going to get access to various financial ratios ebooks financial management related ebooks you will get access to financial analysis related ebooks credit analysis ebooks not yet over you will also get access to other resources like test series templates audio books video books career guidance material and a bonus resource check the link in description and enroll now